saw me and decided to pick me up and said to come inside and play with his kids. Now, let's inspect the lives of two figures who have dominated headlines for very different reasons. Financier Jeffrey Epstein and entertainment mogul Sean Combs, or Diddy. We'll delve into their backgrounds, the controversies that have surrounded them, and the rumors of their connections. Jeffrey Epstein's story is one of a dramatic rise and an even more dramatic fall. Beginning his career in finance in the 1970s, Epstein quickly made a name for himself displaying a knack for deep understanding and manipulation of financial markets. By the 1980s, he had started his own firm, J. Epstein & Co., which catered exclusively to ultra-wealthy clients with assets exceeding a billion dollars. This venture catapulted him into the upper echelons of global finance, granting him extraordinary influence and access to some of the world's most powerful people across various sectors including politics, entertainment, and academia. Epstein's life was one of opulence and grandeur, often hosting lavish parties attended by celebrities, politicians, and intellectuals at his numerous residences around the world. These properties included his private island in the U.S. Virgin Islands, a massive ranch in New Mexico, and a historic mansion on Manhattan's Upper East Side. His private jet was another symbol of his affluent and jet-setting lifestyle, earning the nickname Lolita Express due to the frequent presence of young girls and the allegations that emerged later. However, the facade of a successful financier and a socialite began to crumble in the early 2000s when Epstein was investigated by Palm Beach police in Florida after parents of a 14-year-old girl alleged that he had molested their daughter. This investigation eventually led to Epstein's 2008 plea deal, where he pleaded guilty to state charges of procuring a minor for prostitution and felony solicitation of prostitution. This plea deal was widely criticized as being extraordinarily lenient, considering the gravity and extent of his alleged crimes, which included accusations from dozens of underage girls. Epstein served just 13 months in a private wing of a country jail. Most of it spent on work released at his comfortable office rather than behind bars. The controversy surrounding this plea deal didn't fade and eventually culminated in a renewed scrutiny by federal authorities. This renewed attention led to Epstein's 2019 arrest on federal charges, including sex trafficking of minors in Florida and New York. The indictment revealed sordid details of his operation, accusing him of creating a network that facilitated trafficking young girls across state and international lines for sexual exploitation by himself and his powerful associates. Epstein's 2019 arrest sparked a global outcry and brought attention to the individuals within his extensive network of rich and powerful. The scandal reached a peak when, in August of the same year, Epstein was found dead in his jail cell under circumstances that were officially ruled a suicide. Though this conclusion has been met with widespread skepticism and controversy, his death marked a grim end to his life, leaving many questions unanswered and many justice seekers disillusioned. Sean Combs, known by several monikers including Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, and Simply Diddy, has been an influential figure in the music industry since the 1990s. He founded Bad Boy Records, which quickly became a dominant force in the hip-hop and R&B genres. Under his leadership, Bad Boy launched the careers of notable artists such as the notorious B.I.G., Faith Evans, and Maze, among others. Combs himself has enjoyed a successful career as a music artist, known for hit songs and several critically acclaimed albums. Beyond his contributions to music, Combs has expanded his entrepreneurial 
efforts across various sectors. He's made significant strides in fashion with his clothing line, Sean John, and in the beverage industry with his involvement in Ciroc Vodka, which became a trendsetter in its category. Additionally, Combs has made appearances in films and television, showcasing his versatility as an entertainer and broadening his appeal beyond the music industry. However, his career has not been without the controversy. Combs has faced several legal challenges including highly publicized trials involving charges from gun possession to bribery. Although acquitted in these instances, these legal issues have been part of his narrative in the media. Moreover, he has been involved in various civil lawsuits, some involving allegations of business disputes and others concerning personal conduct. These legal entanglements have at times overshadowed his business and musical achievements. Despite these challenges, Combs has maintained his stature as a major influence in the entertainment world. His ability to reinvent himself and remain relevant in the fast-changing entertainment industry speaks to his acumen as a businessman and his charisma as a public figure. You can be I have so many other things to be fearful of. A clown is not going to scare me. Really? Yes. I'm not afraid of clowns. I, but I heard that you were. <laughs> For our boy Diddy, who founded his record label when he was only 24 years old, became one of the most successful record labels of the time. He was able to do that because he was financed and supported by his mentor, Clive Davis, who just happens to be gay and rich and Jewish, just like Meyer Lansky was. And at the time, he was one of the most influential men in the music industry. He managed all kinds of the biggest name artists that you've ever heard of. Both Jeffrey Epstein and Sean Combs, known widely as Diddy, have been fixtures in the elite social scenes of New York City and the global capitals, often appearing at high-profile gatherings frequented by celebrities, business moguls, and political figures. These glamorous events, from charity galas and art openings to exclusive parties and fashion shows, have often brought together individuals who are influential in their respective fields. Photographs capturing these two figures at such gatherings have circulated in the media, underscoring their presence within these privileged circles. However, the mere presence of Epstein and Combs in similar venues has led to speculative narratives about the nature of their relationship. The visual evidence of their attendance at the same event suggests a shared social landscape, but does not inherently indicate a personal connection or deeper association between them. Each has navigated these spaces perhaps for a different motive. Epstein primarily for networking with the financial and political spheres, and comms for entertainment and business expansion opportunities. The connections through mutual acquaintances, a common phenomena in these high echelons, also complicate the narrative. These acquaintances often include a wide range of personalities, from artists and entertainers to tycoons and philanthropists who themselves are interconnected in various sometimes opaque ways. This network can serve multiple purposes, business ventures, social status reinforcement, philanthropic endeavors, or simply the social pleasures of high society life. Despite these overlaps, the critical question remains. Beyond being photographed at the same events and perhaps sharing greetings or brief conversations, what substantial interactions, if any, existed between Epstein and Combs? Did their interactions extend beyond the superficial exchange of public gatherings? And what type of link or relationship did they share? What links them together? To address these questions, one must consider the evidence, or the lack thereof. No public records or credible reports have surfaced to suggest any deep or sustained personal relationship between Epstein and Combs, not even links. Without such evidence, any claims of a connection beyond casual acquaintance remain speculative. Rumors are that Diddy was running some kind of Epstein type deal where he was filming everybody, right? Dude, when Homeland Security invade your house, you got problems with dudes with fuck guns and body armor. There's yeah, someone said that they weren't there to take stuff; they were there to delete everything. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's fu of course. There's layers upon layers. <laughs> when you get into these <laughs> conspiracy theories, man, they they never end. It's fun to talk about. It is fun to talk about. It's hard to know what's true. People genuinely love it when someone like Diddy gets caught, though.
the glee that people have is weird. Why? Because he's too successful. Also, it's like there was always so much East Coast, West Coast shit that's still like in the zeitgeist. You know, like with Biggie and Tupac, and they were all hating at each other, and they both got killed, and there was a lot going on. And then there's people that thought that Puffy was involved, and Suge Knight was involved. Of, I think Suge Knight's the one who said the thing I just thought of. What thing? <coughs> About that they were there to delete stuff. Well, if he really was filming everybody, I mean, he had a lot of people at those parties, right? Luke from Two Live Crew? Yeah, he said he was to leave early. Yeah, said, right. <laughs> when Luke from Two Live Crew is leaving early, like, you got a wild party. Hot uh, guys, there's a significant frustration about why Diddy hasn't been arrested yet. However, these investigations can be incredibly lengthy, and the justice system often moves at a slow pace. For a comparable situation, consider how long it took for action in Jeffrey Epstein's cases. Well, investigations into Epstein started when Palm Beach police began probing into his activities in March 2005, leading to a raid on his home on October 5. 2005. He was arrested by Palm Beach police on state felony charges, including procuring a minor for prostitution and solicitation on July 27, 2006. That same month, July 2006, the FBI launched its own investigation into Epstein, dubbed Operation Leap Year. Epstein pleaded guilty to a state charge of procuring a minor for prostitution under the age of 18 on June 30, 2008, which resulted in an 18-month prison sentence as part of a controversially lenient deal. Years later, on July 6, 2019, Epstein was apprehended by the FBI's Crime Against Children Task Force at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey in sex trafficking charges, and his Manhattan residence was subsequently raided. Two days later, on July 8, Epstein faced charges from the Public Corruption Unit of the Southern District of New York for sex trafficking and conspiring to traffic minors for sex. The subsequent events are widely known. Epstein died in what was officially declared a suicide. We can only hope that the wheels of justice turn more swiftly and effectively in Diddy's case. Meanwhile, it's important to remain patient. Justice that is delayed is not necessary, just denied. So the guy that had all the information about the investigation suddenly dies. What the hell is going on? You know that Larry King was taking boys out of boys' shop? No. Yeah, I don't think there was really nobody else that did. They didn't know that? They didn't know that. No, they didn't know they make complaints every time, every week on rape and molestation. They know that. Larry King was, I would say, the center of transporting the children around the country. Literally, have to have bricks for brains big on the FBI in this country. And that's exactly what you have to do to do this properly. They now, in my opinion, in my investigation, are the architects of the cover-up. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. He also had a couple of preachers in there. Do you personally, you think they got tapes? Well, my personal opinion that if Lil Rob could be trusted and his statements are true, they got him. Well, Diddy, the prominent figure in the music and entertainment industry, has also been the subject of legal scrutiny over the years. Here's a timeline of some notable legal incidents involving him. In December 1999, Diddy was involved in a shooting incident at Club New York, a Manhattan nightclub. He was arrested on weapons-related charges and charges of bribery. He faced trial in 2001 for these charges. In March of that year, after a highly publicized court case, Diddy was acquitted of all charges, the trial scrutinizes actions and affiliations, but the jury found insufficient evidence to convict. Over the years, Diddy has faced several civil lawsuits related to business disputes and allegations of personal misconduct. These cases have been handled through settlement of court judgments, typical of disputes involving high-profile individuals in complex business environments. And just like Jeffrey Epstein, Diddy now is being faced with charges like sex trafficking 
a human trafficking. So can we see the link now? As we've seen tonight, the lives of Jeffrey Epstein and Sean Combs are studied in contrast and parallel, tied loosely by their high profile statures, but not by substantive evidence of any deeper actions. However, the link between them is quite obvious. In the end, stay skeptical and stay tuned. Goodbye.